FNAC cannot be able to diagnose follicular carcinoma. Why? Because FNAC you are only aspirating whether it is adenoma or carcinoma, what you get is follicular cells only. So how do you say whether it is follicular adenoma or carcinoma? You have to see whether capsule is invaded or not. A capsular invasion can only be seen in biopsy, not in aspiration. So that is the reason FNAC cannot differentiate between a follicular adenoma and follicular carcinoma. You require to do the biopsy is considered to be the most important point. <clears throat> a patient is having hyperthyroidism, goit, deposits of calcium in the capsule of the thyroid. One of the classical description. So what do you like to consider? Medullary carcinoma of thyroid is the one which you need to consider. So five points back karenge medullary carcinoma ke bare mein. Five percent of all thyroid malignancies from where does it arise? Parafollicular cells which are there on the superior lateral aspect of thyroid lobe. Medullary carcinoma is sporadic most of the times, but 25% it can be familial where there are germline mutations in the RET proto oncogene. RET oncogene, RET oncogene, you should remember in relation to medullary carcinoma. Female preponderance is being shown, typical age is 50 to 60. There will be a neck mass, goiter and a palpable cervical lymph node, a local pain, these are all the part of the presenting features of medullary carcinoma. Now, five points we will talk about how do you treat medullary carcinoma, one of the favorite questions of the examiner. More than 50% are bilateral, they show increased multicentricity. Total thyroidectomy plus, plus, plus what? plus bilateral central node dissection as a routine. There are total thyroidectomy plus bilateral modified radical neck dissection if there is a palpable lymph node. Total thyroidectomy plus ipsilateral prophylactic nodal dissection if at all the tumor size is more than 1.5 centimeters. So these are all the various treatment uh, scenarios you have to be very sure about doctor because examiner knows that in MBBS four or five thyroid surgery cases they will peep in the operation theater in that too in the first clinical posting but while framing the questions he will frame as such you are MSFRCS with that level of precision he expects your knowledge so you must be very sure on various case scenarios all right barbalo how do you treat medullary carcinoma total thyroidectomy if there is no lymph node involvement still you need to do bilateral central node central node dissection as a routine if there is a palpable node bilateral modified radical neck dissection if the tumor size is more than 1.5 cm, you should also add ipsilateral prophylactic nodal dissection. That is what you need to remember. If it is an unresectable residual or a recurrent tumor, then you need to do external beam radiation. Medullary carcinoma of thyroid may, there is not much role for the chemotherapy, not effective. Chemotherapy is not effective, is what you need to remember. Medullary thyroid carcinoma, it does not concentrate iodine I131. Normally, to pick up the meds, we give I131, but that is not effective for medullary thyroid carcinoma. Favorite question of the examiner. So, we use the thallium scan, thallium scan, in order to identify the distal metastasis. How can medullary thyroid carcinoma can spread? It can go to lymphatics, neck and superior mediastinum, very important blood. It can go to liver, bone. When it goes to bone, what does it lead to? Osteoblastic metastasis, just like prostate carcinoma. 
even medullary thyroid cancer, osteoblastic metastasis. It can go to lung, it can lead to local invasion. And what does it secrete? Medullary carcinoma of thyroid, calcitonin, histamine, serotonin, that's the reason there can be diarrhea. Medullary carcinoma of thyroid can secrete ACTH, hence it can lead to Cushing syndrome, carcinoembryonic antigen, prostaglandin E2, F2 alpha, etc. etc. is what you need to remember. So, serum calcitonin, that is the reason, is used as an important marker for the medullary thyroid carcinoma, is what you should remember. Now, what are the various thyroid tumors and what are the risk factors? Favorite question of the examiner, you have to be very sure. MTC, you will not forget, RET oncogene. And medullary carcinoma of thyroid is also part of the MEN2A2B syndromes. Then any family history of goiter, dadajiko goiter, dadimako goiter, nanimako goiter, aapko kya mil sakta? Papillary carcinoma. Similarly, Gardner syndrome, not only colonic malignancy, even papillary carcinoma of thyroid also. That is what you need to remember. Uh, <laughs> Love Preet Singh is giving a good compliment. Sir, up the uh, shirt is looking like the starry sky appearance, but is it in multiple myeloma or Hodgkin's lymphoma? Which starry sky, Love Preet, are you watching? Right. Uh, starry sky is good, right? Tonight, uh, I'm watching uh, Robert De Niro's, I have been waiting since long time, The Irishman movie at 10 o'clock. So, by 10 o'clock, we will finish the class. So, to the Godfather like Gunslinger movie, Degreto, with a peg of scotch, single malt. You should also have a little Italian style, thoda, uh, style manna padta, huh? So, good you are able to remember starry sky. But is it lymphoma or multiple myeloma? You have to recheck the love breathe. Thank you for the compliment. So, you all have become like uh, a part of my life, doctor. Every day, you have to do two hours of study. No, I don't feel like going to sleep at all, right? So, Gardner syndrome, FAP, they increase the risk of papillary carcinoma. Then, radiation exposure is also a risk, especially for the papillary carcinoma. Radiation risk 